Okay, everyone, reach your arms above your head as far as you can. They're not going to go very hold far. Hold one, one, two, two three. Okay, three. Now drop those arms and give them a shake for one, two. That's it. Three. Shake out all of those negative thoughts. Oh my god, I don't have time. Yeah, all of those bad vibes. Just shake them all I away. Don't have time. That's right. Now reach out to the side. Imagine that you're reaching for that next promotion. Okay, it's just out of reach, but you figure if I can just reach far enough, maybe it'll come through for me, and I'll finally reach my goal. I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay, that's great. Now I just want you all to. Bring your arm back in, mm. reach out to the other side, exactly the same amount of time, reach for those goals. Nope. Okay, now when you're ready, I want you to bring your arms back in. Now I want you to all just sit on the ground beneath I'm not you, sitting on okay? the ground, it's disgusting. Take a deep breath. I want you to put your legs out straight in front I'm of not you. sitting on the ground, but this... Okay, and now we're all going to put our arms straight up in the air <sighs> when we're ready and lean forward. No, we're not. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try to reach your toes. Uh, what, okay? what I want to do is actually stop doing this. Obviously, don't stretch yourself too far. I will not. Make sure you're just doing what is comfortable, mm. but your aim is to reach your toes. Sitting okay? here is comfortable. So That's good. it. Keep leaning forward. Oh. Okay. <sighs> now, imagine... Imagine that if you touch your toes, you will receive your greatest career goals. Right. Okay? Mm. Imagine that, and, uh, you know, you will reach whatever your heart desires. My heart desires you know, for this to stop. Receiving a raise. No, well, no, well. It could be becoming a partner of the company you work for. Nah. Nah. It could be that if you manage to touch your toes, you will suddenly gain a great relationship with your co-workers. Oh, no way. Not likely. Not likely. Okay, now just keep eating. What are you doing? Great. That is great work. Head office sent me this online exercise class, class which will be available for anyone in the company oh. soon. So oh, why are we clapping? You know, are we clapping? Why are we clapping? So they can't do it yet? Great. Uh, no, okay, not yet. It's a secret you project at the moment. You your, your microphone's there. It's not recording, is it? If it's supposed to be secret. Yeah, no, it's not recording right. yet. And then I want anyone to hear me huffing and puffing okay. whilst trying to do exercise, Andrew. I thought you did exercise. Me? Yeah, I thought you were sporty. That's right. Oh, back in the day, Andrew. Oh. You've taken me right back by saying that. No, no, I haven't done exercise for a long time now. Okay. Oh, right. Now is it good, so the video? You, yeah, it's alright. Who's okay. that? That's Sylvia. Great. She and is... One, let me just read you the description. Two, Hang on. Three. Sylvia is your that own is personal so fitness good. expert. Now, she will guide you through a range of exercise really sessions which you can follow at your own pace and in your own time. It. When it says at your so own pace, it makes me think that you have the option it. to play it in slow motion. Well, it's funny you should say that, because I thought the same thing. And I played around with the settings, and guess what? No way. Three. Oh my god. That's pretty good, isn't it? The video even goes in slow motion. Yeah, look. What we're gonna do now? That's good, isn't it? That is good. Do you want to follow along? You can do uh, the class if you want. Not really, no. I'm glad you said that because I'm bored of this now. Have you listened to all of them? No, but they did send me all 30 of the videos. I said that I'd watch all of them and they can tell if you haven't watched the full clip apparently. So I'm just going to have to leave them playing on mute, I think, whilst I record the podcast. I'm not listening to all of them. Why don't you just say that you can't watch all of the clips if you're not going to do them? Because I always think I actually will and then I don't. Did you really think that you would watch all 30 videos? I thought that maybe if I watched one, I might be inspired to actually do them all. But that hasn't happened. No. No. Oh, before I tell you, uh, before I forget to tell you, uh, before I forget to tell you, yeah. um, Maggie from Crate Expectations phoned to book in delivery for this week. Did you say Wednesday? I booked it in for Wednesday, yeah. Okay, that's fine. 
<clears throat> I never get tired of the name Crate Expectations. It is good. I can never decide if I think it's amazing or terrible. Crate Expectations. Mm. Crate Expectations. Crate. Mm. Expectations. Crate. Crate. Delivery Company. Mm. And they are delivered on crates. Delivered on a crate. Well, anyway, are you doing your podcast now? Uh, yeah, everything is here, I okay. think. Okay. Pen. Uh, hang on, is there a stapler in the office? Should be. Why? Do you need it? Yes, please. You can do it sitting or standing. I'm sure you can find somewhere you can do it. You can even do this sitting at your desk if you want to. This exercise video is so boring. Do you know what? I'm just going to mute it now. I think there should be a stapler anyway. What do you need a stapler for? Just to staple. Yeah, there is one here. Great, can you bring it over, please? This isn't the one I thought we had, so that one must be downstairs. Yeah, I think Melissa was using it, actually. To do the window display? To do the window display. <sighs> Melissa is so good at painting lions. Is it working? Hmm. Is it not working? She is good at painting lions. Uh, Andrew, are there any staples in the office? Are there not any in there? No, look. Oh, I'll have a look. Thank you. I don't know why I'm trying to do that. There's no staples in there. <clears throat> Jess, what size staples do you need? I don't know what that means. We have 26 by 6, 24 by 6, 24 by 8, and 13 by 8. I don't know what that means. Can you just bring them all, please? I have no idea what the difference is between any of these. Can I see? Yeah, they all look pretty similar. Mm. Does it say on the stapler which size it needs? What time is it? Uh, five to three. Oh God, Andrew! I need to get on with my podcast. Okay, okay. Oh, um, hello and welcome to episode twenty-one. Put these staplers in at the same time. Mm. Hello and welcome to episode twenty-one of the Discount Bookshop podcast. As always, my name's Jess and I'm your host of the Discount Bookshop podcast, a podcast to keep you up to date on all things the Discount Bookshop. I know that a few of you, very few of you. Yes, thank you, Andrew. I know that a few of you will be eager to hear the results of this year's Easter competition, but I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until the end to find out. Uh, I shouldn't have told them that, because now they're just going to skip to the end. Mm. Before that, I'll be chatting to Chris Hamilton from Head Office about customers, and specifically customer etiquette. Uh, can't, keep, can't, can't keep him wait, waiting any longer, so without further ado, here is Chris Hamilton. No, he can't make it anymore. What? Yeah, he emailed me to say that he can't make it. I thought he'd emailed you as well. Um, so he's just sent me the notes of what he was going to go through with you. Why can't you make it? Uh, it didn't say, I don't think. Let me just uh, have a look. Hang on. Oh, he said that he's got a meeting. Right. A meeting. He probably does, Jess. And by meeting, did he mean can't be bothered? Well, they do often have meetings in head office, to be fair. That's what they tell you, Andrew. Jess. No, that's fine. Don't worry about me. I'm just single-handedly trying to make a company podcast for the company to be proud of. Jess. If not even head office want to be involved in something which involves all employees and all customers, then that's fine. Just tells you a lot, doesn't it? That's all I'm saying. Look, Chris has sent over some notes. Oh, what kind of notes? Oh, like notes that you pass in class at school and then your teacher says, Oh, you stop passing notes. Like those? What do they say? Oh, sorry. Sorry I didn't bother letting you know, Jess. It's just that here in head office, we don't have time for your silly little podcast. No, we're too busy having meetings. Jess. And just so you know, listeners... And this isn't your fault, but I know that you'll share my frustration. When I said meetings, I was doing air quotes because I don't think they're actually having meetings at all. Jess, stop. They listen to this, you know. No, they do not. No, they probably don't, to be fair. 
<sighs> anyway, Chris sent me a customer service training pack. Okay, so everyone, it looks like Andrew is here today on behalf of Chris Hamilton from Head Office to talk to you all about customer service and how you can be a better, you can be a customer who makes a difference. Is that right? Well, I suppose it, in part this will be helpful for the listeners, yeah. So Andrew is going to discuss things which customers have been known to do and talk about how those things might have a negative effect on the staff working in the store. I don't really think... No, I don't really think it'll stop customers from doing these things either, but it's worth a try. So Andrew asked me to make a list, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, right. Just for the sake of the listeners, I'll just give a quick explanation of the situation. I was complaining more and more about customers, surprise, surprise, because they were getting on my nerves. So Andrew asked me to write a list of all the things that annoy me about them, uh, everything customers do and say, etc. And let me tell you, this list went on and on and on. You know what I'm like. Anyway, now head office has said that enough is enough and sent Chris in. And by Chris, I mean Andrew now. Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, to talk to you all about customer et- et- Customer etiquette. Jess, sorry, I'm going to have to jump in there. I think there might have been some sort of miscommunication. Why? Do you think that Chris was being called in to talk to the listeners about how to behave in a shop? Yeah. Yeah. No, Jess, I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. What stick is that? The list that you gave me, that was because head office had received so many customer complaints that they needed to step in. They wanted to know from your perspective whether you were in the wrong. No, I wasn't. Or whether you, th- whether you thought you were in the wrong or whether you would blame the customers. Ah, uh, I blamed the customers, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you blamed the customers big time. Can you remember how many things you wrote down on the list which you entitled... Cus- um, uh, you entitled complaints about customers? I underlined about, didn't I, if I remember correctly? Yes, complaints about... about. Customers. customers god it must yeah, be it must have been know. upwards of god you're really making me think now it must have been upwards of 40. exactly 100 things you wrote down oh that's right i got to 97 then thought it was a shame not to round it up to 100 so i managed to squeeze in three more it wasn't right difficult. and how many of those 100 complaints about customers do you think were justified oh all 100 really 100 percent. 100 are you sure why which ones do you think aren't justified Well, let's see. I had a read through the list and I highlighted at least 23 as being things which I do myself. Like what? For example, uh, number 31 reads, I find it really annoying when customers fill their shopping basket with items. Then when they get to the till, they say that they're now going to decide which of those items they're going to buy and which ones they they don't don't. want and they're just going to leave by the till. Yeah, what's wrong with me writing that? Well, what if I were to tell you, Jess, that I did that just yesterday in a shop? No, you didn't. Well, no, no, I didn't. Mm. Sure. But what if I were to tell you that I did? What What would you say? I'd be like, what on earth are you thinking? Why didn't you just think about what you wanted to buy before you put them in your basket? That is so annoying. What, what are you just going to... You're just going to leave all the stuff that you don't want for me to put away at the till? Is that what you're going to do? I've got other things to do. No, no, that's fine. Don't you worry. Don't offer to put it all back yourself, will, will you? Even though you could have just made a decision in the first place. No, I didn't think so. You're not going to help put them back. That's right. Just walk out of the shop then. Not a care in the world. And then, once they'd left, I would just, I would just leave the basket of stuff there for ages because I can't be able to put them away. And then I would either complain about them to like the next customer or I'd find someone else who works in the shop and I would tell them about it for sure. That's what I would do. Am I supposed mm. to be answering this honestly? You are, but you see, Jess, that there's the problem. You can't react that way with customers. Well, I don't actually react that way. That's just the way I want to react. Are you sure? Um, yeah. Well, that's not what I've got on my email from head office. They said <sighs> that they refi- received a fair few compla- uh, complaints about mm. you acting in that exact way that you just described over the past few months. How many is a fair few complaints? Uh, One, two, three, four... Oh my god. It looks like you've received 14 complaints. About me complaining about customers leaving things at the till? Well, it just says that 14 complaints have been filed under the heading till behaviour regarding unwanted items. I got 14 of those. 
two, four, six, eight. Kill behaviour regarding mm. unwanted items. Yeah, no, yeah, 14. Over how 14. long? Over how long? Over the last two months. Andrew, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know that I'd received more than, like, four or five. Fourteen! Yeah, so anyway, Jess, head office are a bit concerned about this, and they're a bit concerned that you're getting more complaints uh, uh, since having started the Discount Bookshop podcast. I bet most of those complaints are from Lorraine. Who's Lorraine? This annoying customer who always needs help with everything. Well, this is head office's point. Isn't that job? Isn't that your job to help customers? Well, I mean, there's helping and then there's helping. And you don't help Lorraine. Andrew, when she walks through that door, well, well, entrance, we don't we don't have a door, we have a shutter. But, um, yeah, I know that, I work here. I know, but for the listeners. Anyway, when she walks through that entrance, I know for sure that I'll be doing my 10,000 steps for that day. Because she has me walking up and down that shop like a yo-yo. And how do you react? Livid. Okay, did I tell you about who Chris is, who was supposed to be the guest, uh, who Chris Hamilton is and his background? Is he a secret shopper? No. Is he the person who keeps stealing the squares of paper, which is supposed to be for people to test pe- that the pens work before they buy them? We do have a problem with that in our shop, but no, that's that's not who he is. Big problem, Andrew. I've been watching those squares of paper like a hawk ever since last Wednesday when someone took no less than 12 sheets. Blimey. I know. No, Chris's background is in acting, specifically corporate acting. I thought he worked in head office. He does now, but he has a lot of experience in corporate role play. Right. Do you know anything about that? I've done it myself a few times, actually. My first ever paid acting job was pretending to have a baby for some nursing students. Really? Yep. Okay, well, well, the reason that head office uh, asked Chris to help out today was so that you could go through some role play scenarios related to customer service. Oh, As he's no. not here, I'll be doing it instead. Is that a no-no to you acting oh, or no, me acting? To both. I'll be playing the part of the customer and you'll be playing yourself. Oh, no. We're going to be taking a few of the scenarios which you wrote down on your list of complaints about customers. Do I have to do it in the way I would normally? Uh, for now, just react exactly the way you normally would, and then afterwards we'll talk about what went wrong and how it can be improved. Why do you think it'll go wrong? Well, because I know you, Jess. You know, it it might not go wrong, though. It might be that all 43 complaints which you received overall are completely unjustified. And then I can report back to head office to let them know that your customer service skills are perfect and that the customer is always wrong. I've had 48 complaints overall. Yes, so should we start? Yes. Great. So are there anything, uh, any areas which are particularly challenging to you with customers? With customers? Yeah. I don't like it when customers come into the shop. Right. Can we work on that? Well, the thing is, Jess, if customers don't come into the shop, you wouldn't have a job, would you? Yeah, that's what you always say. Well, let's pick a very specific point to start on. How about number two on your list? Ah, yes, I know the one. You wrote, uh, I find it really annoying when customers insist on paying using cash, even though they only have a £20 note and could quite easily just pay by card. That's made me tense, just you reading that out. It was high up on the list. After me, after me finding it annoying when customers come into the shop. Did you write this in order of annoyance? No, it was it was just in order of what came to mind. That one about not having the right change was fresh on my mind though, because it happened the day before. Okay then. Well, I'll be the customer and you be you. Okay. Ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Remember, for now, just act exactly as you normally would. Okay. Are you ready to pay? Oh, um, yes I am, thanks. Sorry, I'm just using the other till at the moment. Oh, no problem. Just just these items, please. Can you bring them over to this till? Oh, sorry. There we are. I'm using that one. Okay. Beep. 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 Great. Is that everything? Yes, thank you. How much does that come to? Do you need a bag? Um, no thanks. How much is that? Do you have a loyalty card? No. Would you be interested in getting one? Oh, no thanks. Okay, that'll be £2.50, please. There you go. Oh. I don't suppose you have anything smaller, do you? No, sorry, I don't have any change on me at the moment. Oh. Um. Are you able to pay by card? Not really. I need the change for the <sighs> car park. Um, Sorry about that. Do you have the 50p? 
No, I literally don't have any change on me at all. I only have a £20 note. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. Your change. Do you need a receipt? Uh, oh, no, thank you. That's fine. Well, it's not fine, is it? Because now I have no change. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm not saying goodbye. Is that the end? How do you think that went, Jess? I gave the change in the smallest way I could, by the way. What do you mean? I gave the change in like 10 P's and 20 P's. Why did you do that? Because they've inconvenienced me, so I'll inconvenience them, you okay, know? Okay, and do you think that's good customer service? I think that only good customers deserve good customer service. Bad ones get bad service. And was I playing a bad customer? Yes, in my opinion. Why do you think that? Because you could have paid by card to help me out instead of insisting on having change for the car park. We're not a bank. We don't just give out change willy-nilly because people aren't organised enough to bring change when they come shopping. You know, they must know they're going to need it before they come to town. Well, what if they forget? Why are we the ones who are having to be inconvenienced by that? Why can't they go to the bank and ask them to change a £20 note down to, to get some coins? And what if their bank doesn't have a branch in town? Well, why can't they go to a shop where there's a self-service checkout? Then they can use their £20 note, get changed, and it doesn't annoy anyone because it's just a machine serving them. Would you be annoyed if this only happened once in a day? Oh, I doubt it. It only really annoys me when I know that we don't have much change and when loads of customers do the same thing throughout the day. We only have so much change and once it's gone, it's a nightmare. Okay, let's do the scenario again. I want you to think about some adjustments that you can make to improve the situation. Okay, okay here we go. Hello there, please can I buy these items? Yes, no problem at all. I would love it if you did. Thank you. How nice to have such a positive shop assistant. Well, thank you, but actually I'm a supervisor, but that's okay. Beep, beep, beep. Can I interest you in a loyalty card? It's quick and easy to register. Ah, uh, no thank you. I'll just buy these, please. No problem. They're not for everyone. Well, I just don't really have time today. My parking's nearly up in the car park. Oh, no. What a shame that you need to rush. How will you be paying today? I'll pay by cash if that's okay. And would you like a bag or a loyalty card? It's quick and easy to register. Um, no loyalty card or bag, thanks. Just the items. No problem. Here you are. Oh, a £20 note. Great. Cool. Thank you for that. I'll just put that through the till. Ah, oh, not much change in here, because lots and lots of customers have also paid using a £20 note today, but that's no problem. I love counting 20p's and 10p's to make up the change, which I need to give back to you. Are you okay, Jess? Yep, yeah, I'm great. There you go, there's your change. I'll just place that in your hand and let go. There it goes, all of the change from my till and into your hand and into your pocket and into the car park machine, no doubt. All right, thank you, bye. Yes, goodbye. Can't wait to welcome you back to the shop soon. We'll be sure to stock up on change ready for your arrival because it's not a problem at all that you paid with a £20 note. Not a problem at all. Okay, Jess, we're going to stop there. I'm so tired. Are you okay? Was that better the second time? Do you know what? I don't actually know if that was better the second time, to be honest. You sort of sounded robotic and unnatural for some reason. A bit sarcastic. Mm, that was awful. What, being nice? I can't bear it. I can't do it. I think you need to find a middle ground with being nice, but not too nice. I'll email head office and let them know how this went and we'll we'll figure something out to help you um to help you be nicer to customers. But why do I have to be nice to them when they're not nice to me? Well, they're not not nice to you, are they? They just they just do things that annoy you. Yeah. 
So as I said, I'll let head office know and we'll figure something out. Mm. You know, I, di- I didn't like, used to like customers, you know. You still don't like customers. You just pretend I used to like think you. that customers were annoying too. And then one day I realised that there were things that I did in shops which were also annoying and came to the conclusion that we're all annoying, just in different ways and on different levels. What about people eating and drinking in shops? Okay, you know how I feel about that. Go on, the listeners are listening. Tell them about yesterday. Okay, I draw the line at that. That was just damn right unacceptable. I feel like maybe I should bring this up to the listeners just in case any of the people who came in yesterday are listening. Right, they got crumbs everywhere, left their rubbish and got their grief- greasy hands all over the stock. Then, oh, Jess, you, you're getting me worked up now. You shouldn't have brought this up. Then, they didn't even buy anything. Not a thing. Not even what something worth 50p. Nothing at all. They just wandered in, had a look around, ate a greasy baguette, touched some books and left. God, that really, that's really wound me up now. And even if, even if you put a sign up on the door or in the window and laminate it, saying no food or drink, still no one notices. They just stroll on in and make a mess of the shop. And do they offer to clear it up? Do they offer to clear it up, Jess? No, they do not. No, not even with a laminated no food or drink sign. Does, does laminating a sheet of paper mean nothing anymore? Ah, <sighs> goodness me. Mm. Now. I'm really annoyed now, Jess. Wow, gotta just gotta calm down a bit after mm. that. Yeah. Are you staying or going? I'm gonna go calm down t- downstairs, I think, and then email head office about how that went. I'm not sure how you're gonna explain how that went. No, I'm not sure at all. Okay, well Andrew's gone, but must carry on. So so here is what a few of you have been waiting for. The Easter competition winners. Uh, if you weren't aware, an Easter competition was announced in the last episode, the, con- the competition being to make the best rabbit. You could use any materials to make said rabbit, but remember, and this is important to remember, you were not allowed to send in a photo of a real rabbit. Now, out of the... let me see... Out of the 56 people who entered the Easter competition, how many of you, how many of them do you think need to work on following instructions? How many people do you think sent in a photo of their pet rabbit stating that their real rabbit is the best rabbit, despite me distinctly saying that this would result in an instant disqualification? How many people do you think? Eight. Eight people entered photos of their pet rabbit. Now I know that that may, that number may not be uh, may not have been as high as you expected. Sure, but let me tell you, when you take the time to read out instructions, it's an insult when even one person doesn't listen. One is bad enough, but eight, eight times as bad. This makes me wonder why I bother. Sometimes, quite frankly, I don't doubt for a second that your rabbit's great, excellent, brilliant. But this isn't the time or the place to be bragging about that. This is a time for art and creativity. So I'm sorry, Harriet, age five, who sent in a photo of your rabbits, Wilhelmina and Mr. Spud. But not only did you fragrantly break the rules and get yourself disqualified from this year's competition, but you also sent in a picture of two rabbits when we asked for the best rabbit, one rabbit. There cannot be two winners, and I'm afraid, Harriet, that you've earned yourself a double disqualification. You may only be five years old, but you may not enter the next Easter competition until you are seven. You have a two-year ban. I'm sorry. Got to listen to instructions. God, I wonder if I'll still be doing this podcast in two years' time. What a thought. Anyway, onto the runners-up of the competition. Marty, aged eight, made a classic piece of primary school art using various forms of pasta. Uh, not cooked, of course. Marty's dad submitted the piece for him and mentioned that Marty had no help from an adult. Well, it was unnecessary for him to say that because I can say quite, quite um, assured, assured, assuredly, sure, I can say with, uh, I, I'm sure that um, it was obviously made by an eight-year-old. And I'll say no more about that. The giveaway was the uh, by the rabbit's left ear, um, where it's it names the rabbit. And what would an eight-year-old choose to name their rabbit? Slime. Yes, Slime the rabbit comes third. And I believe that a small hamper full of our leftover Easter craft activities will be on its way to you. 
This episode is going to be far too long, so I'm just going to whiz through the next one. Second place goes to Jemima, age 16, who's hand-drawn a picture of a rabbit. The quality is quite impressive, I have to say. The shading and expression on the rabbit's face is quite something. You're very talented, Jemima. Well done to you. You'll be receiving a medium-sized hamper full of -of out-of-date Easter goodies that we don't want anymore. Now for the winner of the the competition and the winner of the Discount Bookshop's 2023 Easter competition is 10-year-old Abigail Warren. Yes, well done to you, Abigail. Your rabbit cake was the winner of this year's competition due to its precision, creativeness and vast range of edible decorations, including flowers made from marzipan, icing for the nose and impressive sponge sugar, which made up the hay for the rabbit to sit in. Well done to you. And a a large hamper full of random stuff we don't want is on its way to you. Okay, and very quickly to finish off the episode, as usual, we have employee of the month. I love this bit. The employee of the month this month can often be found taking part in theatrical role-playing evenings wow very appropriate for this episode where they where they play their recurring character the tray baker as might be apparent this person enjoys baking tray bakes for their friends family and colleagues who they consider both friends and family but that's partly because they work with their half-sister's cousin rosa who is in fact family so they are literally both fr- work colleagues and family okay this is too who wrote this This is too complicated this person enjoys visits to stationary museums and has a particular fondness for staples god they would have loved this episode they would have loved andrew and my chat about staple sizes this person wears two watches in case one stops working and she clue there is a sales assistant at our store in cambridge her name is briarly whittle and she is this month's employee of the month five claps for you Yes, Briley, you were nominated by your supervisor, Lucas Barnes, for always having a good attitude, giving excellent customer service and always bringing a tray bake on the first Monday of every month. Lucas says it cheers everyone up on a Monday morning, except for our other sales assistant, Pippa, who always misses out on cake because she only works Sundays and the cake is always dry by then. Seven claps, I think that was. Uh, Some more applause for you there, Briarly. Well done to you. Keep up the hard work and keep at it. And if you first, and if at first you don't succeed, try again. To you as well. Well, thank goodness we've reached the end. What a journey it's been, and what a journey it'll be. Don't know what I. We don't know where I was going with that. Um, as always thanks so much for listening Uh, please take the time to like this episode subscribe and give the discount bookshop a good rating if you enjoyed Uh, i'd really appreciate it and now i need to go and see how many of those exercise videos i need to get through Uh, something tells me i could be a while off so uh, i i need to go all right thanks a lot